To be kept up to date with the latest video releases and help support these tutorials, please subscribe by clicking the link on screen and follow Creative Studios on Twitter. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this new video. One of the most common questions that I'm asked is why do I get errors in my projection? So this video is going to try and explain how to work around those various errors that you might be getting. Um, one of the most commonly asked about weapons is the op, so to begin with I'm going to start with the op. As you can see on screen now, this is the op template that I've exported out of 3D code. Now, in order to be able to show you the errors, what I'm going to do is create a full colour gradient across the op, um, and then save that, and open 3D code, and that will project onto the, to the op. So straight away it's quite clear that the straight colour gradient that we had in Photoshop is no longer maintained inside 3D code. It's quite clear that you've got a very smooth colour gradient inside Photoshop, but inside 3D Coat it's all broken up. I'm going to try and explain why this happens, and um, it's a little bit complicated, so hopefully I manage to explain it. Um, but basically, as you project your design through the weapon, it hits every single part of the weapon, from the scope through to the tiny little screws and bolts that are in the sides of the gun. Now, when you're creating 3D models for games, you're often limited to a small amount of texture space. In order to utilize texture space in models, you often find various subparts are shared across models. The small bolts on this op share texture space. That's why all the bolts you can see are the same color. Um, other things will be shared on models. I think if I remember correctly on the op, these are also shared. So this piece and this piece are the same. What this means is that you can't have unique textures on each of these bolts. The bolts have to be the same. Now unfortunately there's no way you can fix this. This is always going to be the case. But these massive errors that you're getting on the body of the gun is fixable. Now the reason why you're getting these errors on this particular gun is because of the scope lenses. As you can see here, if we zoom in a bit, you can see that the scope lens is picking up the whole body of the op. Now it's doing the same on the back, but it's just pure yellow, so you won't be able to realize. Now this explains a lot. As you, if you look at the color of this uh, pink here, that's the same color as the pink that we're getting on the, the barrel. Um, if you look at the color of the yellow lens there, that's the same color as this yellow um, circle we're getting here, as well as issues that we're getting on various other parts of the weapon. So to better explain why this is happening, the easiest way is to show you the UVs. So in order to see the UVs in 3D code, you need to click the Texture Editor tab. And if you drag that out, then you can make it larger. By framing them properly. So now it's reasonably well framed. Now if I click the wireframe button, now it'll turn on the wireframe. With the current texture I've got applied, i.e. the sort of multicolor texture, it's quite difficult to see. But if you look carefully, um, you can see this pink circle here, which basically is the scope lens, and you can see this yellow circle here, which is the all other scope lens. Now what that basically means is this whole area, this big circle and this big circle, is basically overlapping every single piece that makes up this gun. Each time you project, you'll get a slightly different result because based on what the projection hits first, it might paint this part or it might paint the scope. Now, as you can see here, it's basically hit this scope lens and made it completely yellow. But on this part, it's actually picked up some of the body and picked up some of the scope and it's kind of basically made a bit of a mess and it's got some bits which are the scope lens and some which bits which are the body. So hopefully now you understand why we're getting these problems. Um, there's two methods to fix this problem and both involve hiding the lenses, but there's two ways you can hide the lenses. The first is if you go up to the hide menu and select activate hide tool. Now what this basically does is it allows you to hide various parts of the model. So for example, if I double click I can hide the barrel, I can hide the stands, I can hide basically anything. Once you've hidden something, you can unhide it by going to unhide all, which is in the hide menu also. So all we need to do in order to hide the lenses is basically double click on the lenses. So if I double click the lens there, that's one hidden. You can see the, the UVs disappearing as I click them. And now if you do the same and watch the UVs here and I double click the yellow lens, it disappears. 
So now I know that basically that's the, the scope lens is hidden and I can um, reproject. I'll show you the other method of hiding uh, overlapping UVs because on other guns sometimes it can be easier to do it in the texture editor rather than do it on the actual physical model. So if I go to unhide all, basically that unhides my lenses again. And the other way to hide the lenses is to go into the texture editor and find an area where it's not overlapping UVs because when you double click it will hide everything that's below the point you double click. So for example, if I double click here, it's going to hide the lens and it's going to hide this piece, as you can see there, which isn't what I want to do because I didn't want to hide whatever part this was. So I'll unhide that again. So what I want to do is select an area where there's no other um, UVs underneath, which is like this area, for example. I double click, that basically hides the lens. Now I do the same on this other part, so there's no nothing underneath here as far as I can see. Double click, that hides the lens again. So both of those things do exactly the same job, but ultimately sometimes it can be easier to do in, in the texture editor and sometimes it can be easier to do on the 3D model. So once you've hidden the lenses, all you need to do now is dock your texture editor tab again. So you just drag that over into here and that docks it. Then what we need to go to do is our stored camera position and then we can export that back to Photoshop, which we do now. Once we're back into Photoshop, all we need to do is create another gradient over the whole model. Save that, go back to 3D Code, and hopefully this time it should work. So now you can see it's done a much better job of matching what we have in Photoshop. I've just shown how you fix some of the issues that you get when you project onto an op. Obviously I can't go through every gun because there's too many guns and to be honest I've not tried creating skins for every gun so I wouldn't even know which parts to hide on some different guns. So I thought it would be good to show a couple more weapons and the different ways that you can find the, the problem areas that you might be getting when you're doing your projection. So as you can see here I have the AK-47 which again is another popular weapon for people to be creating skins for. Now before I even try projecting I can do some quick things to see if I'm likely to get errors even before I do a test projection. So the first thing you need to do to try and find errors is open uh, the texture editor like we did on the op. You can see the full wireframe for the, the model. If you hold alt and then press the right mouse button you can zoom in and out. Now if you zoom far enough out you get an idea of the space that the UVs are using. Now this is quite misleading as the actual texture space is only this box here. If you zoom in and use the middle mouse button to pan, you can actually see there's a yellow line which runs around um, the texture. So people who are not used to um, UVs might not understand why there is parts of the weapon which are in another area of the UV space. So, so in order to explain this, um, in textures and games, look at a tileable texture which you might see on like a wall or on the ground. This is basically what this is doing. It's, if I turn off the wireframe, you can see that this texture is tiled thousands of times around this window. So when artists are creating uh, UVs for their textures, often what they'll do is move duplicate parts. Like for example, you can see here that one side of the magazine is inside the UV space and one side of the magazine is outside the UV space. In games, the UV space is 0 to 1. And then this box here is 1 to 2, and 2 to 3, and so on. Um, but moving apart from this part out into this part is basically the same as having it inside UV space 0 to 1. Now, I appreciate that might sound a bit complicated, but hopefully this little demonstration should make it a bit clearer. So first of all, what I'm going to do is zoom in closer to the magazine uh, and then I'm going to draw a very rubbish design on the magazine. As soon as I draw that mark it also appears on the part of the magazine outside UV space 0 to 1. It will continue to replicate that for all UV spaces. As you can see here, you know, there's hundreds of UV spaces and that design continues to be repeated. So I'm very sure some of you are now wondering why that's relevant to trying to find the part that we need to hide in order to get a better projection. Well, on some guns, you find that there's often parts inside another UV space that overlaps many parts of the weapon. 
So for example, it's pretty obvious straight away to me that there's a big part here which overlaps a fair substantial proportion of this AK-47. Now this part here could be a really important part, but it seems unlikely since you know there's magazines and stocks and body elements which is overlapping. So it's more than likely this part is probably a very insignificant part that you can hide in order to get a better projection. Obviously, the best way to tell whether a part is significant is to hide and then see what part it is. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the hiding method that I showed inside the texture editor. So if I go to hide, activate hide tool, and then I double click, that hides a part. Now I can continue to do this until I've hidden all the parts, but as you can see, this is creating a problem. Even though I hid the part down here, because when I click double click hide, it's projecting through and hitting various parts from the actual UV space 0 to 1. Now, one of the quickest ways I've found to work around this problem is to use another method that's slightly different to the two I showed you before, but should be relatively easy to pick up. So, first thing you want to do is unhide all, put the texture editor back into its place. And then what we want to do is move to a different type of editing tools. So up here you can see there's several different types of editing tools. Uh, but the one we're going to use is the UV editing tools. So we click this. And what this does is opens the gun with uh, a checkered pattern which allows you to check your texture space. Then what we're going to do is zoom out and we can see our problem area here. So all we need to do to fix this problem is change our uh, selection mode to a rectangle which we do by going up to here and clicking here and then dragging a selection out over the part we want to hide like that and then if you scroll down in the list there's a hide button here so if we click hide although it doesn't look like it's done anything that is actually hidden that part inside the paint tools so all we need to do is do that click hide and then go back to paint now if we open our texture editor in here, you'll see the part's been hidden. If we dock that back, and then go to hide and invert hidden faces, what that'll basically do is show us the hidden faces. So now we can see very clearly what parts are causing the problem. These two little parts here, which are basically in the gun around here somewhere. When you project through the object, the projection will hit these parts and you'll get big errors over your weapon. So in order to not get these errors, all you need to do is hide those two parts and then reproject. So let's quickly try it. And what I'll do is I will use a similar gradient to what I did previously. And then save that. And then go into 3D Coat. And as you can see now, we've got a pretty good gradient across the whole weapon. Now just to show what we'd get if we didn't hide these two parts, what I'll do is unhide all, and then I'll export again, and then I'll update that and I'll drag this across, and then I'll save, I'll go back to 3D code. And now you can see quite clearly it's created a whole bunch of errors. You've got pink where there should be green, and you've got no, almost no yellow whatsoever, the pink's over the orange, you've got errors on the on the, the barrels, and basically those two tiny little parts inside here are creating all the issues. So although this is just an example, the same principles can be used to find the parts on other guns which are causing errors. So I'll do one quick final example. Obviously this is M4A1S. Basically I'm going to use all the techniques I've shown previously in order to find where any issues might be on this weapon before I do a test projection. The first thing that I would do is open the texture editor as I've explained before. Maximize that so I can see the full texture space. Turn on the wireframe. And then what I'm looking for is any overlapping parts of the texture. So instantly I can see that this texture is quite different to the AK and that it doesn't have any UVs outside UV space 0 to 1. So that's good. So I know anything within this space is going to have to be the issue. So what I'd do then is I'd zoom in 
And what I'm basically looking for is anything that looks like it's overlapping. So you can clearly see there's nothing in this top part. Everything looks like one singular uh, section. However, something has caught my eye. Um, if you look at this area, it looks like it's probably this part on the weapon or one of these two parts because you can see here there's two so one of these will be the top and one of these will be the bottom top and bottom so basically all I'm doing now is trying to figure out what this part is and why it's overlapping so the easiest way for me to test this is to go to hide activate hide tool double click on this and try and hide as much of it as I can if you're finding this is taking uh, too long uh, you can go over to here and change your selection to a rectangle and you can drag out uh, things, selections to hide stuff. Um, obviously, I, I prefer just to kind of work through um, double-clicking things. Obviously, you've got to be very careful um, when you're double-clicking that you don't hit the other UV set, otherwise it'll start to hide the part that you're trying to find. So you can just zoom in and, you know, trial and error is the easiest way to make sure that you're doing the right stuff. Now, that's really enough for me to start seeing what this part is. So if I have a look, I've hidden all the gun parts. Now looking at this UV, it looks kind of like it's going to be cylindrical. Purely by experience, I realized that that's probably what it's going to be. Um, this looks like it's a cylindrical part. You'll get used to over time the relationship between UVs and the actual 3D models. Anyway, so I'm looking at this part and I'm thinking it's probably something like this, or maybe this part, or something in here. Purely because it's cylindrical nature could be this part. So what I'm going to do is start hiding it. So as soon as I double click that, if I undo that, as soon as I double click the part, it, it's hiding a, an area over here. So I know now that the issue with this particular weapon, although there could be more issues, I've not checked the rest of the UVs, but I'm sure straight away that I'm going to have an issue with this part. What I know I need to do now is um, unhide all, now based on what we just tried, it looks like it's going to be easier to hide these parts using a combination of the 3D model and the texture editor window. So I'll quickly run through the process that I had used to isolate this part and hide it so that I can get a better projection. So the first thing I'd do is obviously select my activate my hide tool and then I would double click this part which hides this massive UV set inside the UV window. Now what I can do is zoom out a little. Now I can use the rectangular selection tool to select only the problem area. So I hide that. So now what I have is this top grip hidden plus this internal part of the barrel. So what I want to do now is be able to unhide the top grip so that all I'm left with is the internal part of the barrel hidden. So the easiest way to do that is to invert your hidden faces which will basically show me the objects that I've hidden. So I can now see that what I have is a top grip and the internal barrel part. So now all I need to do is hide the top grip. So all I need to do to do that is double click. So now what I have is the isolated internal barrel part. So I've invert my faces and what that will do is basically leave me with the full gun but the part and internal part that I'm trying to hide will be hidden. I've basically got a UV set where there is little to no overlapping UVs. Now that I've done that all I need to do is project, so what I'll do is switch to my previous camera shortcut and turn off wireframe, go to edit projection in the external. Once that's loaded into Photoshop, I'll select the editable layer, I'll drag out my color gradient again, save that, go back to 3D coat, and as you can see now, if I turn off the lighting, we've got a pretty perfect um, color gradient from one end to the other. Using this technique, you can quickly find the error areas on any weapon within the workshop. Um, obviously, some weapons are going to be more difficult to hide all the parts than others, but if you persevere and use a combination of the texture editor and the hide menu, you'll be able to find the various parts and hide them before doing your projections. If you're ever really struggling to hide a part, I would recommend doing a test projection and trying to figure out based on the colors, where that part might be. If you do a gradient like this, it's quite good because you can instantly identify an area where it might be, then you can start hiding elements in that area to try and find out what the problem is. But the best way to get used to these tools is to just use them.
What I'd recommend is just to practice loading a new gun that you've not done a skin for before and try to find the areas that are causing you issues in your projection. I really hope you find this tutorial useful and good luck with making your skins. If you would like to support this channel, please subscribe by clicking the link on screen now. Thanks again for watching.